Hey guys, Miss Tracy here, and today we are here on Small Land, and we are going to go ahead and talk about a few tips and tricks that will help you get started, but I really hate long intros, so let's go ahead and just get right to it. So I was really hoping for a storm to happen so I could show you this first tip. You're just going to have to take my word for it, and I know as soon as I'm done making the video on it, it's going to storm. But in the meantime, if you find yourself without shelter, you have a few options. First off, all the NPCs have a small sheltered area in their base, but also you just need a few pieces of fiber and wood to make this. One foundation, one wall, and one floor. Now I go in here, and you can see above my health bar there, there is a little house symbol. That means I am sheltered. This little makeshift, I don't even want to call it a shack, because it's not even a full building. This thing here, this overhang, will keep you sheltered enough to make you not freeze in the storm. So that's all you need. All right, tip number two is to get yourself some armor right away because if you look at the armor that you start out with, the traveler's outfit, it actually offers zero protection. It's just cold protection. So you want to go ahead and start with that padded armor or maybe even the light armor because at least it gives you one protection. Um, the padded will give you cold protection too, so I recommend doing the padded, the padded armor first. Which brings me to tip number three. You can find the materials that you need to make anything on the go in your codex. That includes armor at those other people. So you can see what you need to make things in the campfire, things in the workbench. But you can also see what you need to make. So I actually scrolled past a few because I didn't want to give any spoilers away. But here you can see what Caleb sells and you can see exactly what ingredients you need to bring him so he can make it. All right, tip number, what is it, four? And for this one, guys, I'm going to jump off the tree and die so you can see something. So this is what I do for you. Oh my. Yup. So I just dropped all my stuff. I died. It happens a lot in this game. But did you know you can track your gravestone on your map by clicking the gravestone and it'll show up on your compass. It's kind of faded. It's hard to see, but you can see it there on the top of my compass and it'll lead me right to it. You can also track other things like your tree encampment and different people on the map. You may have already noticed my next tip, but you don't have health regen unless you have your food above 75. So right now my health is low, but I'm gonna eat. Now it's regenerating because it's over 75. So as long as you keep that health over 75, you will get a very slow trickle health regen. My next tip is kind of similar, but it's about your weapons and tools um, and your armor, of course. So if you go to repair your stuff and it's less than 20% broken, so it still has like 80% health, like this one has about 90%, it is free to repair because the item is only slightly damaged. So later on, when you get some more heavy duty stuff that takes a little bit more materials to make, I recommend always keeping the materials to make workbench on you. So what I do is when I go to put stuff away, before I put it away, I drop a workbench down in the middle of my house, then I put away my materials, and then on the way out, I break my workbench, I bring it with me, and now I can repair my stuff on the go. I can make the workbench wherever I want, go up to it, repair my stuff, and move on with my life. So just make sure you don't get it past that 80% mark or you will take other materials to, to repair it. So I do a lot of streaming and I've rated a few people and I've seen them making the same mistake in the beginning. So this may be kind of obvious, but just in case you missed it, in the beginning you start with a club. The club is not great. I recommend immediately making a sword. First off, the sword is way better on ants. Second off, it only takes a workbench. So you make the workbench and materials. As long as you have the fiber and the wood, which is all over in the beginning, you can go ahead and make a wood sword and you will do a lot more damage against things. Don't forget to use your block and your roll. My next tip is about these big trees, the ones with the vines and the mushrooms going up the sides. You probably already know that you can claim these trees, but there's a few things about them that you might want to know. First off, to claim the tree, you gotta climb up the tree. That includes a lot of parkour, jumping on mushrooms, climbing up vines. Once you've claimed one tree, you don't have to do that anymore. You just have to look for this little base right here. And you go talk to this guy and you can tell him you wanna claim this tree. Once you've claimed the tree, you can call the hot air lift and it'll come down and pick you up. But the tip here is that if you didn't know, you can take this tree not only to any other tree in the world, so you can go ahead and find another tree just like it, claim that one, put your base there, but you could also take it to any other server. So if you go to a friend's world, as long as you have the character that your tree is on, your spawn will be in this tree. You'll have all of your stuff, you'll have your base, you'll have everything you need, 
in that world too. It goes by character. So if you switch characters, you're not going to have the same tree base. But if you use the same character and go to different worlds, you can take your base with you. It's kind of like Fallout 76 if you've ever played that. All right, I hope that helped you out. If it did, make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I'd also love it if you'd go and check me out on Twitch. My link is in the description. But that's all I have for you. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments. Otherwise, hopefully we'll see you guys next time.